Hello, and welcome to the Memory Palace. The Memory Palace is a 32-bit frame store and digital video effects processor. In this first video, we will go over how to use an external input and look at some of the basic buffer commands. Here you can see, uh, I just have a very simple ramp plugged into a staircase to give us some color effects, and that's going into the RGB inputs of the Memory Palace. The alpha input is not used in this case. We'll go over that in a later video. For output, we have just simple analog video one. We could also use the DVI output uh, and get similar results. When looking at the menu here, I have everything set basically to the default values. So path is set to warp, key is luma, ins is ARGB, outs pre, aux alpha, CSC set to hue, saturation, and value, threshold is set to window, and scale is set to camera. All the controls here are zeroed out, more or less, uh, so what you're seeing on the output is basically the same as what's coming into the RGB input. There's no feedback at this point because our keyer is set to zero. Right now this looks basically exactly like what the input would look like. As we adjust the zoom controls, you could start to see the buffer at work. So right now we're seeing that input video signal, but at a smaller scale. And we can spin it around. And we can move it in X and Y. I'll reset these all to zero. Or thereabouts. To really get the buffer moving, we want to start to apply a key to the input video signal. Right now I have width all the way up, which basically is keying nothing. As I start to pull this down, we start to key a smaller window of the luma signal that's coming in. And as I adjust the center, it adjusts the center of where that window is. So with a circular ramp, it's possible to get these nice little rings and as I move the zoom down, you can see the buffer start to activate. So now that the warp buffer is keying, and you can see as we move the center, it changes where in that ramp gradient it's pulling. And as we change the width, it's changing how much of that ramp gradient is. You can start to see these echoes and repeats. This is the fundamental effect of the memory palace. It is a feedback machine. As I start to adjust the rotation, you can see how the feedback buffer works. So in each iteration, in other words, in each circle as it gets smaller and smaller, that rotation is being applied just a little bit more. You can see this effect even stronger with a hue variation. So as I increase the hue, you can see with each iteration of the buffer, the hue changes slightly. And as you increase that, the effect increases. Similar with saturation. So you can see the effect getting more and more saturated as the iterations go on, and the hue becoming more and more uh, deviant from the original color. By increasing contrast, the effect is that things get a little bit brighter. By decreasing contrast, they get a little bit darker. So now you can see each iteration kind of becoming darker and darker as it becomes more and more saturated. There's a variety of effects to explore in here. As you change rotations, as you change zooms, you get a variety of different effects. One thing you will notice is the circles starting to cut off in some areas of the image. That is because they're basically extending beyond the edge of the buffer. So where that bottom of the screen gets cut off, it's going to get cut off in each of the repeats. This effect can be used creatively, or it can be avoided by making sure that your primary shape does not go beyond the bounds of the screen. All of the transform effects in the memory palace have, uh, well not all, but most have some kind of motion effect built in. So if we look at rotation and push the button underneath, labeled spin, you start to get 
this constant spinning rotation. And the slider now becomes a speed control and a direction control. So at zero, you should see no motion whatsoever. As you start to increase it, you get a clockwise movement that goes faster and faster as you increase the control. If you go negative, you get a counterclockwise effect that again goes faster and faster and faster until you max it out. This, of course, can be used under CV control by using the voltage control input. Uh, similarly, with X and Y, you have scrolls. So this will start scrolling the X signal. And again, this operates as a speed control. You can do the same for Y. Just the width a little bit. There we go. And there's also a motion control built into the keyer called scan. So what this will do is it will swipe through the center instead of me having to do that manually. Again, in the center, no effect. And then we can increase the speed of that keying control. So with these together, you can get a variety of motion effects without needing any external CV source. Additionally, the Memory Palace features a few preset geometric effects, tile, reflect, and mirror. Tile effect should be pretty self-explanatory. As we turn it on, it starts to tile the buffer you start to get some really far out feedback effects with this if you're not careful or if you desire such a thing. And this of course works in concert with the other geometric transform effects. The reflection mode reflects the edge of the buffer. This is best seen in conjunction with a tile effect. So now our tile edges with reflect mode on, mirror, and flip. So each iteration of the tiling gets flipped, offering you additional artistic possibilities. X and Y mirror split the buffer in half along the center of the screen. So it's almost as if your screen is folded in half. And this is available separately in the X and Y dimensions. Try a little bit less width. set to spin. Let's zoom it up a little bit. And there you go. One additional control you have on the keyer is the softness control. This has the effect of sort of blurring the key so you can go from a very hard key to a very soft key or anything in between. So here you see the effect of some very nice soft keys. You also have a key invert command, which should be fairly self-explanatory. One last thing to point out of the basic controls is the delay slider. The delay slider changes the amount of delay between each iteration of the feedback buffer. As we go to higher and higher values, you should start to see longer delays in between the iterations. Turn the spin off so we can see this a little bit better. So as we increase delay, 
you should see the repeats happen much more slowly. Let me bring this down. There we go. So each time I'm making a move, you're seeing a slight delay. In this case, we're set to about 21 frames, so just under a second between each iteration. And if I go back down to zero, Okay, so up till now we've been in warp mode uh, and Memory Palace is shipping in the first version with two main modes of operation. There's warp and there's paint. Paint mode requires a slightly different approach to the instrument. So we'll cover that in a different video. So that's a basic introduction to the transform and cure controls of the Memory Palace using an external input. 